Nerds and welcome to another stabby episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name is Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode number 354, recorded on Sunday, January 16th, 2022. Tonight we're talking about Scream, which is... A brand new movie, not to be confused with the 1996 version. Before we get into the review, let me introduce everyone else on the show tonight. First up, calling in from Washington, D.C., we got our boy, Randy Gandy G. Landy. What's up, man? Hey there, boys. How's it going? (laughs) Thank you for that. That's one of the best Uh, bumps we've ever had. (laughs) Dude, Randy, I'm pointing with that bump. I love it. The Dewey theme. It's 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 like the slow, serious Western. I fucking love that shit, man. It reminds me of oh, Twin it's Peaks. Very Western. Twin Peaks. Yeah. Uh, doesn't? Yeah. I guess. I uh, yeah, it's kind of that. But it's like, way I, I, more like, spaghetti Western to me. Yeah. I was listening to the whole soundtrack. I'm like, man, this. It sounds like even those little jingle bell things they got going are definitely like uh, spur. Yeah. Like a evocative yeah. like yeah. spurs and shit. Yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. Last but not least, calling in from Jacksonville, Florida, we got our boy Soju. What's up, man? What up? It's your boy Stab Stains. Wow. (laughs) One of the more more creative choices I see this week. <laughs> yeah, we've covered too many screen movies at this point. I know. J- Justin and I were talking earlier. We always do our freeze frame before Rob jumped on. We were like, I don't know what to do. I just got a knife. And I was like, yeah, me too. I got to figure something else out to be more interesting. I don't know how to do this anymore. I've got this uh, knife. <laughs> big, big John. I'll be your big uh, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we did have a real big john little john moment didn't we uh, we did indeed this movie references halloween 2018 man amongst others but we'll we'll get into that moment i don't okay it, you're gonna have to tell me about it uh yeah before we get into the review let's tackle some housekeeping real quick uh here's another reminder we got our february poll pick currently posted on our patreon website if you support us at the five dollar level or above you get the chance to vote on a movie we're talking about this february the theme for february is my blood sucking valentine and the three movies to vote between are a girl walks home alone at night nosferatu the vampire and shadow of the vampire hey bob yo how the numbers looking? We're halfway through January. Jesus Christ. I know. What is, what is time? It's, a, it's almost enough? Halloween season. Why is it that I keep ending most of my sentences that way now? Nah. Something, <laughs> something in the water, I guess. Uh, Jesus Christ. Girl walks home alone at night, still winning. Shadow of the Vampire is picking up a little bit of steam. Nobody wants to watch yeah. Nosferatu the Vampire, apparently, which you uh, should. Yeah. Everybody should. It's too a lot of Herzog fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's <laughs> Artsy and fartsy, but damn, it's worth your time. All these movies are, though. They really are. Yeah, me and Randy start watching that one around Thanksgiving, and we kind of dipped out because it was heavy. Well, and- we were, it was heavy, and we were <laughs> fucking worn the hell out. Yeah, yeah but I would, it looks great. I really want to get back to it, but I have not yet. It's worth it. Definitely check all of these movies out, no matter which one wins. Uh, get your votes in before the end of January. We'll see what movie we're talking about this February. In other Patreon news, uh, we got a brand new mini cast dropping this Friday. Um, If you hit us up on the Patreon website at the $10 level or above, you get access to a whole host of Patreon exclusive shows. Uh, I think we're pushing like 60 shows on there now. Uh, Most recently on uh, this this Friday, we got one dropping where Juice and I are talking about Lamb and A24. Lamb. Lamb. Yeah. 
A24. Um, yeah, that was one that we did not get to cover last year. Um, you know, we, we cover a lot of A24s generally, though. Covered St. Maud, but yeah. didn't get to Lamb. Um, but, yeah, that's definitely uh, worth checking out. I know a lot of people were talking about Lamb on the Slack late last year, you know, when we were coming up on the end of the year. And um, I think a lot of people will be interested in kind of hearing that discussion because it seemed pretty mm -hmm. mixed about what people were thinking about that. Yeah. Um, and I think even our discussion is a bit mixed. So, yeah, definitely check that out. Yeah, check that out. It'll be dropping this Friday on Patreon. Um, also, damn, we got all kinds of new shit dropping. Uh, we got a brand new episode of Let's Get Physical Media dropping this Tuesday. Uh, Mikey and I talk about our December pickups, and we also get into our top 10 of 2021. Top 10 Blu-ray slash 4K releases of 2021. If you have any interest in collecting uh, boutique Blu-rays, 4Ks, or even like limited edition DVDs, shit that's kind of like rare or out of print, uh, Mikey and I talk about all that stuff over on Let's Get Physical Media. You can get that podcast anywhere you get your podcasts. Uh, check that out. That episode's dropping this Tuesday. Um, we also have some new YouTube stuff going on. What's happening, Juice? Yep, as we announced last week, but it wasn't available yet. Uh, we have a new brand new segment we've never done before to drop for this year. It is named after your uh, your home tiki bar, Bob, called yeah. the Haunted Hideaway, and um, it's it was it's got a death curse. It might, it might have a death curse. It does. Uh, uh, <laughs> but it was for specifically the movie we are covering today, the new Scream movie, and you did a custom never before existed tiki drink that you showed us how to make called screaming and creaming it was delicious wow an original uh, title wow <laughs> <laughs> right but it was delicious and uh yeah it's up on our youtube now youtube.com forward slash straight chilling podcast you're gonna need to stock your bar with a little uh what is it falernum bomb yeah. everything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna have to stock your bar. Period is what I heard when I saw that thing. Ooh, it looks cool. delicious though, man. If any, if the your previous cocktails are any any indication, I'm sure it was delicious. It looks good. Yeah, uh, thanks, Juice. I mean, you you put it inside of your mouth hole, and you seem to enjoy it pretty good. I'm glad you did. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, check it out on YouTube. If you do happen to make one at your house, you know, l let me know if you like it. Let me know if it sucks. I don't know. We like feedback. Send us a pic. Yeah, send us a Send pic. us your dirty cock tail See, If you can make it better than Bob. <laughs> make it better, please. I would you know, yeah. Don't yeah. use the pusser's rum. That's, you know, you switch. Gotta, <laughs> you got to use it. You got to use the pusser's. <laughs> Bob says you have to. Non-negotiable. Okay. Oh, the iron fist <laughs> is coming out for pusser's. <laughs> Also, the the Lemon Heart 151. If you got it, you got to use it. It's, it's honestly knowing you for this long, Bob. I could not believe, and I guess it's just from frequency of use at this point that you could say the word "pussers" on camera without giggling. <laughs> you, you you did really well. I got to congratulate you on that. Thanks, man. It took a lot of practice. There's so many out. I can, it's yeah. insane. I could just see you <laughs> practicing in front of a mirror saying "pussers." We shot that scene over. thirty times. It's the <laughs> pussers rum. <laughs> 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 that's yeah 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 there you go uh yeah check that out um i think that's all we got going on anything else i forget anything you guys want to mention mm, i don't think so okay no cool. i'm good all right i think our house is clean this house is clean all right, let's get into the main event. We're talking about Scream 2020 Deuce, and we're kicking it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? <laughs> Scream. This has a runtime of an hour and 54 minutes. Uh, this was directed by Matt Bettinelli, Olpin, and Tyler Gillette. Um, this was like created by the Radio Silence Group. So they're like a, I think it's three people. They're like writer, director, like tr trio of like creatives. Um, they've huh. done work with, um, they worked on, I think Southbound was something they they were on. Uh, also more, more recently, Ready or Not is sort of like their big oh, mm, kind of okay. breakout movie. I didn't uh, realize that. Yeah, uh, this was this was written by James Vanderbilt, 
Guy Busick, and also Kevin Williams, who who wrote uh, the majority of the previous Scream films. Stars uh, Neve Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, and a whole bunch of brand new people we're going to be talking about here shortly. Uh, the plot synopsis brought to you by IMDb is as follows. 25 years after the original series of murders in Woodsboro, a new ghost face emerges, and Sidney Prescott must return to uncover the truth. Gentle Mang, this is a brand new movie. First time watch for all of us. Would you recommend people check it out? Randy, kick us off. Uh... Yeah, I think I would. I mean, like to me, the biggest hindrance to watching this, because I did want to, was having to go to theaters and face down the Rona a little bit. But fortunately, that wasn't so... It was not It was not crowded. It was a brand new Alamo Drafthouse Theater, which was my first experience there. And it was fabulous for that thing. That's awesome. Um, a little overpriced for my taste, but otherwise, like, great time. And, you know, I felt comfortable. But speaking to the movie specifically, yeah, I definitely would recommend it. I think any existing fans of scream are going to have a good time with it for the most part. And I think that, um, I don't know, like we're pretty hard up these days for, for half decent slashers. So I think this one, this one is an easy win for that category. Nice juice. What about you? Uh, I would say, yeah, check this out. I think this is a slam dunk for like January horror films. You don't get a whole lot of good one of those. So, um, so that's nice. And I think, yeah, if you're a scream fan, I think you'll, you will enjoy this. I, I mean, I guess you could go in, you know, I don't know. I don't know how well it would stand on its own for someone who's not familiar with the franchise. Um, I don't think it, would very yeah, well, I think it, it would be difficult. I mean, I think it would still be entertaining in its own right, but it would probably be like kind of confusing, I guess. You would get by, but yeah, you, would not, you yeah. would not receive the full dose for that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but definitely first grade fans, like for sure on that one. Uh, Bob, what do you think? Yeah, I would recommend checking this out. Uh, this is a very solid Scream sequel. Um, if, if like you guys were saying, if you haven't ever seen a scream movie before, I don't know that this is really a movie made for you. Um, as, as the movie makes very clear, this is a movie made for Wes Craven in honor of Wes Craven and his memory. And it's also very much a movie made for the fans of the scream, yeah. scream movies. So, um, well, I would yeah. argue actually that this is made uh, like like most scream movies in general are made also for horror fans in general. Yeah, yeah, that's so fair. like it continues that um, to whatever effect we'll get to. But I think that it's fair to say that if you're if you aren't a scream fan but you are a horror fan, there, you might find some interesting shit in this movie anyway. Yeah, and maybe even at like a younger generation. And that's why I was kind of hesitant about like oh you know if you've never seen Scream before. But I feel like especially the last two have really in a way spoken to a certain generation of the now. Well, I you think know? They've, so they weren't rushed out immediately use, using the same tropes as fodder to, to yeah. build meta commentary out of, they have like 10, 20 years of extra material to build meta commentary out of in the horror genre. And yeah. they do. So, yeah. yeah. So hmm. That sounds like a pretty solid recommend from the straight chilling crew. So check out. And the light to the senses. This is my friend. It is a delight. Um, yeah, check out Scream. We are going to spoil the shit out of this movie. And here comes your warning. Spoiler warning. <laughs> All righty, then. Let's talk Scream. I got the plot synopsis typed up here. Gentle Mangs, if you will indulge me, I'll blast through it real quick. Bob, hit me with that plot synopsis. Blast it! I'm blasting you. All right. 25 years (laughs) after the original Woodsboro Massacre, Tara Carpenter receives a mysterious phone call from someone wanting to play a game. The psycho later shows up dressed as Ghostface and stabs her several times. Tara survives and is recovering in a hospital. Uh, Tara's high school friend, Wes Hicks, calls Tara's older sister, Sam, and tells her what's happened. Sam and her boyfriend, Richie, head to Wordsboro immediately. Uh, While at the hospital, we see Sam have hallucinations of Billy Loomis, one of the killers from the original Scream movie. Uh, Sam then tells Tara that Billy Loomis is her real father, and that's the reason their dad left when they were young. 
Uh, Sam and Richie visit a now divorced Dewey Riley and ask for his help in figuring out who the murderer is. He declines, uh, but after contacting Sidney and Gail, he changes his mind. Dewey, Sam, and Richie visit the home of high school twins Chad and Mindy. They discuss the rules of a, quote, requel. Uh, it turns out Randy from the original movie is Chad and Mindy's uncle. And uh, we also find out that Vince, which is Ghostface, uh, Ghostface's first murder in this movie, is Stu's nephew. Uh, Sam is then accused of being the killer, and she storms off. Ghostface then murders Sheriff Judy and her son Wes. Gail Weathers returns to Woodsboro to cover the story. Sam and Dewey head towards the hospital because they believe Tara isn't in trouble. Uh, they save her, but in the process of doing so, Dewey is killed. Uh, Sydney returns to Woodsboro after finding out Dewey has died. Uh, she and Gail ask to help Sam, but she declines, saying they are leaving town. Sam, Richie, and Tara Hall ask, uh, but Tara can't find her inhaler. She has a spare at her friend Amber's house, so they go there to pick it up. The house is later revealed to be Stu's old house from the original movie. Amber's having a giant party, and we see Chad get murdered. Mindy is then attacked, but Sam intervenes and saves her. The group reunites and all suspect each other. Uh, Amber then shoots and kills Liv, revealing herself as the killer. Everybody then flees. Sam finds her sister bound and gagged in a closet. Uh, Gail and Sydney arrive at the house, and Amber shoots Gail in the stomach. Sydney shoots Richie in the leg before being attacked and thrown over the second story railing. Richie reveals himself as the second killer as he attacks Sam. Amber and Richie take Sam, Sydney, and Gail into the kitchen and, expl and explain uh, their motive, which is they are obsessive fans of the Stab series. They are disappointed in the trajectory of the franchise and have gone on a killing spree to create some interesting source material for a new movie. They also defend themselves from being, quote, toxic fans and uh, say there's no such thing fandoms born out of love. Uh, Amber is then attacked by Tara, allowing Gail to get a gun and shoot Amber. Amber falls into the stove and is ignited before Tara shoots her dead. Uh, Sam has a vision of her father before she stabs Richie multiple times, cuts his neck, and unloads several rounds into him. Amber then runs around the corner for one final scare before she is shot yet again. Tara and the twins end up surviving and go to the hospital. Gail decides not to write a book about the murders this time and instead plans to write one about Dewey. Uh, media crews stand outside of the house and report on the incident just like the ending of the original film. Before the credits roll, we see the words... Four Wes appear on screen. And that is... And then everyone said jabroni. And then everybody said jabroni. <laughs> what if... Perfect. What if that's really how the movie ended? All right. It is. Let's, I know. Let's get into this fucking movie. I I will say... I don't... This, this is not my favorite scream sequel i think it's a very good scream sequel i mm. i was i was very um i think my expectations had me kind of thrown off a little bit for this one here for some reason i was very like uh ready to receive a movie that that like really changed like 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 went outside of the lines of the franchise as it was as we knew it mm -hmm. i thought they were going to go like like ultra meta in a way that we had never seen before and instead they almost went the complete opposite direction and went back to basics so hard that I was a little bit jarred when I saw it. Actually, I was like, "Wow, they're they're huh. sticking so close to the formula in a way that I just really wasn't anticipating." I don't know. What, what did you guys have in your minds when you were going in to watch this movie? I think Bob Jesus. always sets himself up in terrible ways. <laughs> I feel like Maybe. the higher the expectations, the lower Bob comes down on. Yeah, it, the it lower really the is expectations. A, it's quite a plummet when it doesn't work. Yeah, um, I think that's the rule of Bob. Um, I don't. Know. I I I'm gonna make the claim. I was trying to like work through my mind, so there could be something that I missed. Um, but of the past five years, you know, as these you know, reboot sequels have been coming up where it's not, it's not like in my mind, like, a um, not like evil dead from like 2013, where it was like a reimagining where they're specifically like a Halloween trying to connect them to the original source material, but trying to do a reboot as well. Um, I think this is the most accomplished and, um, the best. And it was funny to have them lay out, 
the rules of those and go through my mind and be like, God, so many of these have failed. I was thinking, you know, Halloween, we saw Candyman last year and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, I guess we've got like a Chucky and Child's Play, and there's like a handful. And every one of them have left me like really disappointed in serious ways. And this is the only one where I felt like, like, yeah, that's what it should be. And I was so kind of proud of that because I had a blast watching this in the theater. And I think I went in cause I was like, this is a January movie scream five. I mean, come on, how good could it be? And I think that's the difference in me and Bob is cause my expectations were like, I was setting them low and I was so, so, so pleasantly surprised where I was like, yes, I really dug on that. So I guess I was right in the middle compared to you guys, because to me it was, as far as expectations go, I, I had completely, I guess I was completely prepared for either a complete misfire or like based on some of the early reviews, a complete Renaissance revival. You know what I mean? So I, I could have, it could have gone either way. It landed somewhere on that spectrum and it was uh, fortunately on the, on that more favorable end for me. I will say that there are some things that I like really, I don't like about this movie um, that were like I, that. I just my, my mind wants to go back to the flaws. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's pretty good overall. I don't agree that like, I don't know that it's, uh, I, I want to give it some space before I start comparing it to candy man or any of the other like requel, I guess if we're using that term, but I do think it was a good time. And that's all that a screen movie really needs to be. Um, you know, the commentary that like that they provide, I think is smart enough to, squeak by and that's where i think its biggest failing is for my part my money but um overall like it, it's just it hits all of the pleasure moments that you want and it does break the mold slightly by taking out one of the big three but it's almost kind of like a i don't know it's like a a a demanded sacrifice for the continuation of the series like you can't like how many sequels are we going to have the t- the you know these three characters barely squeak through before somebody gets one, at least one. And I was kind of ready for Sydney to take the bullet, you know what I mean? But uh, like, depending on who you ask, unfortunately or fortunately, it was uh, our boy Dewey. And, you know, like the way he went out, I thought was, was heroic and good or whatever, but I really were kind of resent that he was like this penniless drunk in the end. Like, I, I don't know if you're going to, they spent a lot of time, settling him as like like i don't know having fallen from grace and being really self-pitying and that's how he goes out as like he goes out as the hero sure but like the lead into that is very i don't know it, it, that that was one of the things that i was kind of sad about i don't think it was necessarily bad it just wasn't it, i wanted it i wanted something better for dewey i guess a little bit I don't know if you guys felt that way. Yeah, I, I kind of like saw them killing Dewey off in this movie as like almost necessary because he's escaped death like so many times before. Like there's been, I think it was in two where like we you almost thought definitively he was dead, but he ends up not dying. Yeah. I will say like him ending up like stuck in Woods, Woodsboro and like being divorced from Gail Weathers like kind of makes sense to me. It's not like it's, I hate to see that for the character, but it makes sense to me. I think the thing that I had the biggest beef with regarding his death was that he was killed by Amber, which is like a teenage girl who like, I don't know. She's like maybe a hundred pounds. She's very small and she kills him with a knife and he's like a retired sheriff, like armed, with a pistol and he's like fully like aware he's been that stabbed he's, many times. Yeah. He, he, well, he, he has been stabbed many times, but like not in this movie. Like he's still like as healthy as he yeah, can. No, be. Yes. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. just, no, no. I, I, that's what I'm saying is like, this is a guy who's seen it some shit. Like, yeah. 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 He's, you're right. he's survived. And like this, this teenage girl is able to take him out with a knife, even though he's like a sheriff with a gun. I don't know. I didn't really like that particularly, but it's, I don't know. You, you got to like, uh, except they made it as reverent as possible in they, that, yeah. in the death that he got. Cause like they even had Ghostface say it's an honor, which was like, yeah, yeah. Just another level of the meta bullshit. You yeah. know, <laughs> as you're right though. Like, I don't like that. It was this character that was pretty underbaked in herself. Yeah. As yeah. a, as both a suspect, a villain, everything like on every level, she was kind of like her and the one other, um, 
uh, friend in the friend group with the purple hair uh, that was dating her. Yeah. yeah. Like those two seemed like completely underbaked to me. Like yeah. they weren't really given much. And it, it, I don't know that, that really to, to me, like to have, that's where like this movie I thought was going to go bigger was with the reveal of the killers. What they did was like, kind of like, um, I can understand the pull for not wanting to kill off all your main characters or have one of them turn into the killer or anything like that. But these are two characters that are mostly, mostly not interesting. I would say yeah. in and of I themselves. Did, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I, yeah, I would say about the Dewey kill, we've talked about screen before and you know, these characters, they're the ones who keep returning and coming back. And if I had a critique of this film, I would say almost that, even uh, yeah, there were a couple characters like in the friend group that were underbaked, but there always are. There's always like a couple yeah. that like go out pretty quick, or you just don't really know a lot. You could about argue them. that Stu was too. So I mean, it's really up. To yeah, to mm-hmm. and so I'm willing to forgive that. This is the worst kind of addition that these three characters, I think, our main characters have given to a screen film. And it it makes some sense. I mean, at this point, they're they're trying to, you know, hand the torch over or whatever. Actually, I'm hoping I like that this closes the door on it. Um, <laughs> I, thought, I hope that last time. <laughs> I know, but I really think if this one did close the door on it, it really would make the Scream franchise like the chef's kiss because what I did like about the Dewey kill was again, going back to what this movie is commenting on and trying to achieve. It was badass. <laughs> like this is the gritty remake that so many things say they want to do. And even from the opening was so one thing I really like about that is it does that just even the way that the, the ghost face mask is lit and he always stabs people, but these stabs, like even in the opening sequence, when he steps on that girl's ankle and it snaps, like it, it's got that, like 2018 Halloween where like the stuff is just that much more brutal. Like it actually feels like you're kind of there and you're like, Oh God, every time something happens with Ghostface in this, I felt that. And Dewey's Mm -hmm. was like going up the gut. And again, how the mask is lit, almost like this gray and the way like she stood there with the two knives. And I was like, damn, they really are nailing this tone that so many people want to achieve and usually fuck it up with terrible like storytelling or whatever it is but every time especially that Dewey scene I was like that's it like that's it achieved yep that's what everybody (laughs) wants to do you're doing it right now and it was just impressive I was kind of like almost relieved like oh thank god these people got it thank (laughs) god because i've seen it attempted again and again and again and it's like never quite there and then this time it was and i love that see i I mean i don't i'm not going to argue that it wasn't good because it definitely was i thought that like again like the scene was not bad it's just i kind of wish i'm just kind of bummed that dewey went out the way he did or whatever yeah so i'm not going to like argue that it wasn't an effective scene in and of itself um like in a vacuum it did it didn't do dewey so dirty as to be like unforgivable or anything like that it was just a character choice that they made and that's all fine i to me it was just like i i just the only thing i would contend with you is that i don't know that this is and maybe it's my memory fault faulty memory but i don't remember think this is so much more brutal as like the first one i think the movie in general is less pastel than the other sequels but I think it's pretty comparable tone wise to the first one, which I think was, you know, that's the return to basics for me is that like it regrounded the franchise a little bit um, after, especially like, you know, in three things became almost a joke, you know, Jane Silent Bob are there and shit in four, even though it's like, you know, they are going back somewhat to basics. They were still also like had an endless parade of celebrities on the, as the intro uh, meta, 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 meta jokes on top of each other. Like they cut some of that out. They, they trimmed down on some of that stuff and they definitely trimmed down on the pastel comedy of the other sequels. So to that end, I say yes, but as far as brutality goes, I guess it just doesn't seem markedly more brutal to me than some of, some of the other kills. 
you know, that's a small contention though. And I'm not, <laughs> not too bothered by it either. I really liked the, how brutal it was. Like I was like, yeah, like the ankle snap in particular, for some reason that was the one that was like, mm, okay, <laughs> yeah. we're serious today. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think that like, for me, like the, I think there's one thing in particular that really stuck in my craw with this movie. And it was, it had to do with all the meta stuff or whatever. I feel like they were, straining against that a little bit like they were working extra extra fucking hard to get you know say to have something to say about the current state of horror films and and i guess they kind of pivoted horror fandoms in the end or whatever and that's fine i guess just things like like, um the fact that i don't know that i'll ever really forgive this movie for doing anything to legitimize the phrase elevated horror especially one that's supposed to be you know to and for the fans to me it's like i don't know any horror fans that do anything but scoff at that title like do you I, i've never I heard do. anybody in the horror community embrace the idea or I, outside even and actually i don't i think these are discussions that we have all the time in our slack so i was like smiling to myself when they were bringing this specific thing up especially in the introduction of this movie because it kind of sets that tone and i don't think it's so crazy to think because you gotta remember who was speaking at the time this is a teenager who is mm-hmm. claiming as a horror fan and so i i i found it interesting to see maybe i found it believable that someone would be like no ask me about it follows the witch yeah you know hereditary that they themselves would refer to it as elevated horror i'm not saying that you know we do or that's what we but like i recognize what she was talking about when she used that term and found it you know kind of cute in a way or you know i I, I found it it i found it entertaining really yeah yeah no see and i want to be clear here i'm not i'm not complaining about the that they talked about that schism like that's i think of an important schism to note and i think that it you know like to whatever extent we want to have a conversation about that in the scream franchise which is perfectly i think that's perfectly on the table you know what i mean to me it's just the fact that the movie Scream has now used the term elevated horror mm. to me means that it is now in the general lexicon about horror movies and there's no turning it back now. I think and it, it seems to me like it already I, I don't was, think I don't, really it, but I, I don't mean, think, I think so man. I think it was heartily rejected by most horror fans. I, well, so they also like name drop torture porn in part 4 or what and, and I think it yeah. was because it is part of pop culture and that's why they're commenting on it in the movie that's the whole that's what they're doing as they're commenting on pop culture because it already exists you know so yeah i mean i'm i mean i don't have them any problem with them talking about either of those things no we know the term he was saying that they were you're locking in the idea of elevated horror but i i think you're i think you're yeah i i do not agree with you that this was like completely rejected by the entire horror community and now scream five has said it that's what it's locked into i think a very minor i think a very minor contingent of people might have embraced it initially but it got huge fucking backlash and to me it's like let's i don't know it's like legitimizing something that could have just faded away and it would have been better if it did because to me and to most of the people that i saw talking about this it's uh, it's it's a little insulting to people who like just like the horror movies that already are. To, to, you Rand, know, to I don't know. point, I, I completely agree that using the term elevated horror sort of infers that el- like horror that was made before 2015 is like yeah. not elevated. Pointless. Ele- it's for yeah. stupid, stupid viewers who want like blood and guts and tits or whatever, which is not the case, obviously, as we have discussed time and time again on this show. Yeah. But I do think this movie does a good job at commenting on a lot of like modern trends and rules Mm -hmm. like they talk about the elevated horror stuff and um tara like even at the end she's like i still prefer babadook like that's that's funny and they also do a great i mean it's kind of funny (laughs) well they also do a great job at outlining the rules of like a prequel or or like a quote legacy sequel i guess some people are are calling Mm -hmm. movies like this a legacy sequel. I think it does a really great job in a way that some of the other scream sequels fail uh, at like outlining rules in like, like really breaking those down. I think um, where this movie fails pretty like terrifically in my opinion is that it it outlines all of these rules and explains to you exactly what these requels do, but it does not 
go outside of those rules. It does not subvert or break any of them at all. It just follows them to the T, which I think ultimately creates a somewhat boring sequel like all these other movies that they are referencing. They're kind of boring and derivative See, like this movie, I think. This movie calls itself out for being derivative, it which does. I both appreciate yeah. Yeah. and frustrates me because it's yeah. like, to me, it's almost like this movie hits this cadence where I feel like people in a few years will watch this movie and watch it with the same way they would listen to Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. They think they're listening to a song that's about how great America is, <laughs> but it's not. It's fucking sarcasm. It's irony being used for laughs for mm. people that know better that this is, you know, and st- the fact that they didn't subvert it to your point is, is a part of that. But also I don't know that these rules like qualify are like, I don't think they really apply to more than a handful of movies anyway. So like, it's already going to be broken. And, and I don't know. It just seems like if you're pretending to, if you're pretending to be the thing that you are making fun of, you aren't really making fun of it. <laughs> like, unless you are yeah. commenting on it, like you're, you're outlining something, but you're not commenting on it is well, the problem I have. That's I guess of, that was, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Bob. Go ahead. That's one of the things that like scream, the original scream does so spectacularly is it comments on all these horror movies and it outlines the rules for you very clearly. And then it subverts and breaks a lot of them. That's what makes mm-hmm. Scream so fucking interesting. This movie does all of that, but it doesn't break or subvert any of the rules. It like kind of misses the point that it's setting up. It doesn't. It doesn't would, drive it home. Mm, I would potentially, and I'm not sold to myself. I'm just thinking this out loud. Really, okay, yeah, yeah. I think maybe Scream Four did did that piece better than this movie, which is interesting because I like this movie a little bit better than that one overall. I just feel like it's a stronger I, I film. Agree. I was yeah. more invested in it, but I think that it would t- it commented on the idea of reboots and uh, you know, those sort of things a lot more pointedly in the original or in, I'm sorry, in the fourth one where, where they end on don't fuck with the original from Sidney Prescott. Mm-hmm. That's a lot more, that's a lot more significant to me than don't fuck with the daughter of a serial killer from yeah. Sam well, yeah, the dawn, and, and like it's just not as strong. Like they're not commenting really to me. And maybe I, the most commentary <laughs> they have is from from Mitch. I think his name was saying talking about toxic fandoms, which R- I think is Richie. A, is, Richie, yeah, Richie. Thank you. I think that I, that's that's what they could have focused on and really had like something that. to say. I like that. Yeah, I experienced this movie so differently because what I saw them doing and what I think they did is actually doing what people cannot do in that they made this legacy sequel. And I feel like where they say like, you know, they try to do this new, I feel like we say this in our critiques all the time where they want to pay. Like we talk about, even when you're talking about with ghostbusters, you have just so much reverence for the first film, but you also want to do your own thing. They usually just completely conflict and make a big jumbled mess. And like, yeah, okay. In, in that way, this movie is like simple, I guess, or like, like we say back to basics are not like super complicated or not like super overachieved. But to me, each scene, especially after laying out the rules to me, it really was just like, see how easy this is or like, see how you're supposed to do it. And every (laughs) time I was like, yes, yes, yes. Thank God. Yes. Because I couldn't just help uh, the past three years, at least every time one of these movies comes out, it always starts off with like, Oh, it was solid. I like the way they did this. I'll put this new thing. And then all of this new thing. And that kind of like, doesn't make sense. But this time I was just like, that's what I generally want. What this movie, I'm not saying it's like the best fucking thing, but it's the best fucking thing. As far as these legacy sequels go, I disagree with you. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily see like, and I think that comes from you having such hard feelings towards all of those other films. Like, and I don't have hardened feelings about all of them to the point that you seem to, Mm. and that's fine, you know, whatever. Like, but to me, this is like, I don't know, like for, let's take old Billy Loomis, for example, Billy Loomis (laughs) is a fucking, a fucking Jedi ghost in this movie. And (laughs) I'm split. I'm fucking split because he is, he's a fucking stupid ass, like contrived inclusion. But I also love seeing Skeet in the role. Like, like the fan service landed for me, but I know in my heart that it is 
only good for fan service. And the fact that like, I don't know, even like having him like fucking show up and do this thing, like the <laughs> hush to Sam and point to a knife. Like he's a fucking force ghost. What are we doing? Like, I, I want to see that character back. Can we do a flashback? Can we do a VHS tape of him and his childhood? Like, do we have to have it done in this really, really silly way? And I don't think we do. To me, things like that are just like, I don't know. I don't feel like that. I think that detracts in a way that the original, it, the original doesn't have that sort of True. that thing bogging it down. And I don't think that it's any more or less contrived than some of the stuff we've seen in some of these other legacy sequels. To, to kind like, of <laughs> piggyback on the point that you're making here, Randy, like something, something we mentioned in passing that I want, I want to circle back to is like how uh, this movie was sort of like going back to basics f- from the original scream. And in a lot of ways it is, but I think only like in plot, um, not in tone. This movie makes the same mistake that all of these other legacy sequels make that I know we've talked about before on the show where it has such extreme reverence for the original and it takes the original the original movie like so much more seriously than the original movie took itself and tries to like bring that back as if that was how the original was made when it wasn't like if you watch the original scream it is funny it is hilarious there's there's (laughs) there's a fucking Wes Craven is in the movie dressed in a as Freddy yeah yeah, Freddy (laughs) Krueger sweater and then we see like Henry Winkler go oh hey Fred and then and then we see the fucking Fonz get murdered like this movie's yeah. not that at all this movie takes itself so fucking seriously and it takes Stu the original is the so killer. fucking seriously it, I, f- I feel like it just, it just makes the same mistakes that a lot of these other legacy legacy sequels do make I'm not I'm not saying this is a terrible movie by any means but no. it, it kind of falls into that same trap in a way really. I think that's really like a personal like how you take it and I don't I don't think that any one of us has like a definitive, you know, opinion, like our opinions are definitive on that. But I think that I, I see it more your way than I see it juices, Bob, I think, because like, yeah, like you have like, Oh, there is a lot of reverence for the original. And I don't think that that's unearned because you still have three fucking characters from the original, mm-hmm. but, and then the movie itself makes a point to call out how derivative it is. Like we're in the same fucking house. Which, are you serious? Like, and I, I love all of that. Which I love like, that, but also it's, you are what you pretend to be. It's that same problem. If, if they had <laughs> done all of that up to that point and acknowledge like, wow, this is derivative as fuck. And then like, we're like in the same house. And then they did like changed the formula and did something truly original. This would be a fucking home run, but they don't, they just yeah. do the same thing, which is, so I is don't the even ending know the, for you that really fucked it, huh, Bob? No, it's not really. I, I did enjoy the ending. I, it's not a bad ending. It's it's the fact that they comment on everything in a very smart way. It just way, falls short. And then they just bit. change. They don't change anything. It's just the same. It's just all the same, man. That's really my biggest problem. And, you know, this is coming from a place of love because I did love this movie to some extent. Like, yeah, I, I yeah. think that it's one of my favorite. Like, I don't know. I, I'm still waiting to rank it for myself, but I think it's one of my favorites uh, out of the, the scream sequels. I don't see. Yeah. And I think most people t- tend to agree with that, good that it doesn't hold a candle to scream, but it is a like the best or one of the best sequels out of the five. I think that's fair to say. I think that like, it seems like that's the, the consensus view. We can, we can talk about, so, we can focus on some pros for a while. Cause I know we, we kind of been like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have I've I mean, been focusing on them, but no, we, I'm just, I, I'll let some other, in defensive position. So yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's highlight I, the good stuff. Okay, I texted Bob about an hour in. I was like, I think I know who the killer is. Um, the mm-hmm. killers are. Were you and right? this is actually I was not. And okay. I think I told you Friday, I was like, I wasn't even on. The, I didn't uh, like, guess at all. Did Randy, Randy, did you guess? Did, did you try to guess, yeah. Randy, who you thought it was? I didn't make an explicit attempt to try, but there was a few times where I was like, yeah, that's a little suspicious. Like, I, I internalized, internally guessed a couple times, but not in any way that I would put money on. So my two, here are my two guesses. I had a regular like, okay, it's within the people that you see and like you can guess who it is and this is the route they're going. I had that guess and then I had like kind of what Bob was saying if it all like switched over. And So my regular guess was I thought it was going to be the twins, which would make more sense with the Dewey kill like because you got the big jock guy or whatever. I thought it was going to be a twins and I thought they were going to go like a revenge for Randy way because as soon as we showed to their house and they have like the memorial for randy and shit and finding out 
finding out that this girl is like Billy Loomis's daughter and be like, you know, Named Sam. Yeah, exactly. Like I thought it was kind of, <laughs> kind of go that route. And that would have brought some of the levity too, like a revenge for Randy or whatever. I thought, so I was like, it's the twins. That's kind of cool. Um, but it wasn't when they, and then the, you know, the dead giveaway that that wasn't the case is when, you know, they killed Dewey and they didn't say, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, give away. Also, my like crazy twist that I kind of wish they had done to kind of speak to Bob's, you know, oh, they could have done something crazy. Since we're already doing the Billy Loomis ghost, you know, Lillard has said in interviews, they like, like, oh, we don't actually know that Stu died. And they're like, mm-hmm. in Stu's house. Dude, I thought it was going to be one of those things where you never could get, like, you I kind of thought that might happen in too. all the uh, screams, but this one, like, it's fucking Lillard. You it's can't the fucking guess. Saw 6 ending. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for <laughs> I thought, third killer that never came. I thought they were going to do something brand new. Dude, like I thought I like was it, like, they might bring, because be everybody nuts. was there, yeah. except, and I was like, I know they mentioned, oh, we're in Stu's house, but I was like, if they brought Lillard back to be the killer that you never could guess, I was like, that's it. Because also Billy Loomis betrayed him. So I was like, oh, it could have a motivation to like, he's getting revenge on, you know, Billy's daughter. And I was like, that would be so fun. But neither of those things happen. I was I'm like, I'm hardwired oh, not to try and figure out who the killer is, I think, because uh, in these movies, inevitably, like it ends up being somebody else. And yeah. every, the thing is, like this movie in particular, it's really obvious. Like in terms of motives, they all have one, and they all fit the rules perfectly. Like everybody mm. there follows sure. that rule of needing to have a connection to a legacy character of some yeah, kind. Every yeah. single person in their friend group is a progeny of somebody in the original fucking friend group. And that's, I mean, a little, it's a little tough to swallow for my taste, even within a scream movie, just a little bit. But, you know, if they're going to do that, then that really keeps the doors completely open until they're just basically monologued out. Okay. Just let it wash over. Well, since y'all didn't <laughs> try, those were my guesses. I do want to get more. That's a solid though. guess. I think that's a good guess by the way let me give some more positives to this another thing that i thought um they did a good job and it kind of goes back to dewey but it's other places as well especially um you know judy or whatever um making these kills feel like they matter we just watched Halloween Kills. Where we were like, these are old school characters that mm-hmm. they're specifically bringing back to to like give this some kind of weight and value. And you know, sometimes even like Judy, you know, in the fourth one, she's this is she trying to split Gale and them up, and and you know, she's got this loose thing. But her rushing back home to thing. save her son, and then getting stabbed in the gut, and then the son dying anyways. I was like, man. You know, that's pretty heavy. And then Dewey, you know, getting it too with Gail calling him and they had their little exchange. I was like, you know what? For a movie, especially like Bob said, for a movie franchise that really is the one who kind of pokes fun and does these silly things, it feels like all of the other franchises have taken on that role. And that's why I was kind of forgiving in this one, too, because, again, where I was saying, like, Mm -hmm. yes, you're actually accomplishing what nobody else can do. It almost was like a role reversal where, like, yeah, normally the Halloweens of the world are the serious ones and Scream is the one who kind of pokes fun at it. But in this way, where it's like fucking like what rob was saying in halloween kills where you know that guy is like come get some i'm a, i'm gonna give it to you michael and all this yeah. bullshit that seems so silly fucking bomb me bullshit where screams the one that's actually taking it seriously and giving weight to these characters that are normally goofy and you feel so tragic when they actually that's interesting so i liked that uh, aspect too that that is interesting like that, that's a fair point to say that like the scream scream as a franchise or i'm sorry scream as a franchise and halloween as franchise with this if you're comparing the apples to apples like re- reboot sequels yeah um against each other like that yeah the tones kind of like middle towards each other a little bit where yeah, halloween gets so. a little le- a little a little bit more willing to joke around mm-hmm. a little bit w- more willing to be silly Goofy, and scream gets a yeah. little bit more willing to just yeah. play it straight mm-hmm. so yeah to that ex- i mean i don't think that's necessarily a ding against either one movie though i think that's that's just an evolution that maybe makes it more appealing to wider audiences which is all these movies are trying to do anyway so. I, I agree <laughs> these the, the kill sequences in this are very well played out they're not like super inventive people are just getting stabbed but when they do get mm-hmm. stabbed specifically 
Officer Judy and her son Wes, like you really feel that shit. And then Dewey's the next kill right after that. Dude, yeah. like when when Wes gets stabbed and then like f- slides down the door and Ghostface is locking eyes with him and, like as he f- slides all the way down. That there's like a certain intensity and brutality that I want from most slasher movies that does fail to deliver that I wouldn't expect from Scream, but Scream does deliver. So like it's that was a little surprising. That intensity usually isn't existent in a Scream movie. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, it's a say, nice thing. <laughs> it is. It is. I appreciate it. I want to say, like my my absolute favorite thing about this movie, the thing that 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 really surprised me was the motive. I I. It's hard to see the motive coming. Usually, I never would have guessed that the killers were just like horror movie fans that were just killing people to provide some sort of like source material yeah. because they're tired of watching shitty movies and they're hoping somebody's gonna make a movie right. about the shit that they're doing. I I love that. I think it's hilarious the way they that the characters talk about meeting on like a subreddit and shit. And I also think it's very smart in a in a in a sort of like, you know, a snake eating its own tail way that like the first movie is commenting on how, you know, horror movies don't make serial killers, they make killers more creative. And in this movie, these killers are trying to make horror movies more creative by killing. Like this whole like <laughs> like circular That's interesting. Motive I didn't think of it is that way. Hilarious and I, I love that hmm. so much. I thought that was a stroke See- of brilliance. I really wish, honestly, like that's, that's a great point. And I kind of wish the movie had landed that point better because yeah. if I had gotten that, like, and maybe it's just me being dense, that's very possible, <laughs> but like for, in People fairness, think but, we're elevated. We're not. We're, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, my elevator goes to the basement level. Um, <laughs> so no, but like if they had pushed that and that they had landed on that line even or something like that and just really laid it on thick with that, I think that would have like completely assuaged my, my, my misgivings about you know who the killers are and why because i think it's interesting that they're like i was like okay so they're toxic fans this is a commentary about how you know fan spaces can get really fucked up and of course nobody who's fucked up thinks they're fucked up and so these fucked up people find each other and then they do something fucked up okay sure but if you had if they had landed that where you just landed for me i would have been like okay yeah great like this is this is the commentary that i expect from from scream Mm. so maybe it's a matter of them not pressing the gas hard enough for my stupid brain or maybe it's just you know they didn't yeah, I mean, if you don't remember that no, line don't from the original, then you probably aren't going to make that connection. It, it didn't cross my mind. Yeah. yeah, exactly. If they had, then that's a perfect thing to like to sh- to literally say because it's spoken in the first movie, and it's yeah. like you're right. That's the thesis statement of the movie. Yeah. Have a thesis statement here. Have one. like this one doesn't really have one except to say generally that toxic fans exist and they bad, and yeah. it's like okay, like. Sure. Well, it wasn't just that. There were so many moments in here that like rang true as something of like, yeah, that's believable in a way. For instance, the girl selling saying the elevated horror based on the these kids' age and their attitudes and stuff, that came off as totally believable to me. This girl living in Stu's house and then becoming obsessed with it, mm-hmm. that came off as totally believable to yeah. me. Like yeah. that idea that yeah, they okay, were sure. selling. There was this moment of levity as we talked about um, you know, this movie's not. It's it's the least, you know, jokey of all the scream films, but there was this one moment that you know kind of got a chuckle out of me i wish we maybe could have had a couple more like it where he was watching <laughs> stab eight and he was like you know ghost oh, face yeah. new weapon or whatever with the silver <laughs> mask or whatever yeah. that shit that's, that was a direct jab at star wars it was that shit, man yeah, yeah. that shit was uh getting me pretty good um that was i wish funny. i wish there were, because even in four you know they were showing scenes from stab six and seven and you know that's clever and, and cute and fun yeah. so i'm glad that they kind of kept that going in this one and i did like that moment <laughs> yeah i would agree that's i can't think of another like really funny moment besides that there's some like kind of pithy dialogue but for the most part there's no like yeah there's not like that, that. and actually the twins kind of ended up being some of the lighter characters i guess yeah, um, they did, yeah. can i and, ask you this yeah oh, i'm sorry go ahead no, I, go didn't, I didn't mean to catch up. Well, I was uh, just going to say, it. like, did they ever pay off? I, maybe it was just meant to be a red herring, purely and pure and simple, but the bruises on the football player twin, um, like, they never really f- 
paid that off in any way, did they? He said it was from football. football. Yeah. Right. I know, but it's like yeah. like it see even the way he said it was very like like suspicious and, and not a in suspect. a way where I'm like that's yeah. I know and like I'm guess it's just a red herring, but to me it's like I wish they had done if they're gonna show something like that, I feel like they gotta pay it off a little bit better. But that's, yeah, I did. It's a minor gripe, very minor. <laughs> I wanted I wanted to ask you guys your your opinion on the opening scene. Scream is notorious for having some of the best opening scenes in any movie, specifically horror, but really any movie if you get down to it. Like the original is just fucking iconic, man. Uh, mm-hmm. Watching this, I was personally disappointed in it. It felt, um. I don't know, just just like it was cribbing on the original, but also like in a way that just it really added nothing. And I think if it did anything, it took something away in that it's the op- the only opening scene for a screen movie that does not result in a kill. It just felt like it pulled the punch. I don't know. Did you guys have any feelings about that scene? I do. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You do what? Yeah, I I what do. I, mean? I like. Okay, I was just waiting. It seemed like Randy was about to say something, but I um I talked a lot. <laughs> um, we know. <laughs> to me, it wasn't a pull punch because, as I mentioned before, it set the tone for me of like I think this this scream movie is going to be brutal, and I get that they're trying to make them brutal. Like I've heard other franchises trying to do their legacy sequels or whatever so um so that said that good tone for me but and then when she lived i was like okay this is where they're trying to kind of do their own thing you know this this girl live and i actually another positive thing i really like to continue off of that that i'm glad they didn't kill this girl Mm -hmm. is because i really like the relationship between the sisters and i love that moment where where she has that she at the end where she's questioning whether her sister's the killer i would that was a great moment to me yeah, and yeah. so I'm super glad they that they that didn't off, kill the sister. You know, I know it could have been any character. It could have been anyone. But to me, I like the setting and it left or the opening because it left me with a smile saying, like, I think I know what I'm in for. And that's what I got. Actually, this this opening sequence gave me what I thought this movie was going to give me because of that. Hmm. I, I I see Rob's point. I like to to me, it's like, yeah. I guess you could see it as a pulled punch, but I, I I can understand feeling that way. For me, I, it really felt like the expected amount of subversion um, for the beginning. I, I guess I was more like happy that they didn't try and outdo the meta of the fourth movie, fourth one, the meta yeah. intro, yeah, yeah. because I was like, man, what? How are they going to intro this movie after doing that shit? They like yeah. they're going to go? Has, how can they go bigger? They've got to go smaller, right? And they did, which I was like, okay, this is good. And then like the fact that she survived to me and also the brutality. Like, I think that I guess that sort of set the tone for me that this is like, okay, so maybe this is, you know, like uh, these, maybe these ghost face killers are, you know, less capable. Maybe, you know, maybe this part of the subversion. I thought at one point, I thought that when Dewey was fighting ghost face and when he was right before he walked away the first time, Mm. I thought that they were going to have like a kill mid film. And I was gonna be like, Holy shit. There, we're going to find out who one of the killers is in the middle of the movie. Mm-hmm. I think that I got a minor, I was ready for that kind of subversion. So the minor subversion of the, the character at the beginning surviving and getting to play a part in the rest of the film didn't really rank, I guess. Yeah. It didn't, one th- pss, didn't bother me. <laughs> one thing I will point out. So of course, as fans, you know, and I listened to Bob's feature recently on a cut above and stuff like that, but we even had our own personal discussion. Like, what do you think screen could do? What, like what meta and since Randy pointed out how crazy the fourth one was, what could they do? And some, here's some things that I'm glad that they did, did not do. I'm mm-hmm. glad they didn't make the original cast, the killer killers. Yeah. yeah, I was. That was the thing I was most afraid of because you're going to lose everybody that way. Like yeah. nobody wants to see Sidney Prescott turn evil. Nobody wants yeah. a heel turn for Dewey. Dewey. Yeah, even Gail, who is the most vitriolic of the bunch, nobody wants to see her yeah. fall from grace in that way. Uh-uh. <laughs> so I'm really glad they didn't do that. I'm kind of glad they didn't. Um, see, and I think that's the thing too. Four did such crazy meta stuff, and I actually watched Four to prepare for this film too. And while it's good, and I like it a lot. 
the in the same way that this the the opening of this sequence kind of ties to the ending of this movie you know the, that one kind of did too the false leads and it becomes this almost gimmick where you open with the like oh it's not done it's not done it's not done and in the same way it ends that way it's not done mm-hmm. it's not done and then once you're kind of in on the joke it does become like a, a little much i respect it because it's unique and it's original but also too you see the gi- i see the gimmick for what it is it's gimmicky and so in the same way like this one, I'm glad they didn't try to be too gimmicky. And I think that felt refreshing to me, especially because they did it for the fourth one. There's no need to make this one right. the actual real life movie that the first one could have been based on. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I they could have easily tried to, to go bigger, but they didn't. And I respect that. I have to respect yeah. that because they, in my opinion, they pulled off the simplicity of it. Look, you know, I, I agree. I think that like, I like what we got and I don't want to like poo poo what we got because it is hard to come by a good sequel and it's yeah, fifth entry, in you know January I mean? In January. <laughs> oh no. Um, the death knell. But like, also I do want to say like, there are some subversion, some like completely balls to the wall, weird choices they could have made that I would have respected for the big swing purely and sure, simply yeah. i might have even respected having one of their original three kill even though i would have definitely hated it uh, that's that's where the level i'm talking about where it's like well you know what they didn't do the same thing and you know like that's that's worth something it's not worth everything and it doesn't make it a good movie necessarily but it can and it's yeah. more likely to if because you don't know what to expect so if they had done something like to your what you were saying like if they hadn't called this movie stab and made it fucking <laughs> you know, the movie in the movie and making it meta, meta, meta commentary. Like they could have done that and it would have been fucking bizarre and really hard to make work, but they could have theoretically done that. They could have killed one of the killers in the midway through. And we have to figure out what their motivations were so we can find out who they were connected to add in different level to the whodunit factor. We got the fan service. Lord knows we got the fan service in the form of fucking ghosts and shit. And it's like, you know, Good. I'm glad I got to see Skeet in the in the getup again to some degree. Boy, but, Skeet. It didn't, but it's not what I, that's not what I really wanted to see out of this movie. I wanted to be thrilled and scared and surprised, and I got most of that. But it could have been could have been done better, I think. And I think that like the only way they could have done it differently to get that result would have been to take a big swing with a high margin of error. <laughs> so I don't yeah. know. I'm a little split on that. I think I, I am happy with what we got, though. I do I do want to s- stick with that. I think uh, it is about time to land that plane. Let's go ahead and rate this movie out of five. Juice, kick us off. How do you feel? All right. So this, I mean, this has some push and pull. This this isn't an absolute home run, but in some ways it kind of is for me and for what it is. Um, as I was watching this, I was relieved and pleased that... To me, it really kind of nailed what so many franchises in my mind have failed over the past at least five years. You know, I've expressed my frustrations with a lot of these franchise movies and stuff like that. And just the way it's not pulled off so many times where in my mind, sometimes it seems so easy or it's almost there. It's just that under the skin frustration where this one, I was like, it was like the pressure was released or I was like, yeah, thank you. Like I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but you just gave it to me. And uh, like, that felt like, like a relief, like, yes. Um, However, I do think over the years, this movie is going to be one of the most kind of forgettable screams, but I think it's kind of built in too. I mean, it, it has, the least amount of, um, you know, interaction and input from the original characters. So, and you, in a way you have to do that. I mean, even man, like not to not, everybody's getting up there and everything, but like Courtney Cox, man, I was just like, I don't want to see these characters anymore. What they gave me was like enough, but in the grand scheme of scream, you know, it's the least amount, um, generally. So it's like kind of a catch 22 in some ways. And that's why I feel feel like if this is the last one i will be so so happy with the just overall general 
Scream franchise, almost like where it ended, kind of where it began. And if that's the case, then I love the simplicity of it. Um, as I said before, I love the general kind of brutality and more straight tone that they were kind of playing with everything. Um, I liked guessing again. I liked being there and guessing and not getting it, but it making sense and it not being this crazy twist. I liked that they didn't try to go too crazy meta. I would have been on board if they tried and would have given it a fair shake, but I'm glad that they didn't feel obligated to do that. I thought this was, especially with, you know, Wes Craven not being involved and, you know, the main characters not having such a huge role. I think this is I think this is about as good as you could get on it. Um, I really do. And I'm proud of them for doing that. And I'm like happy that I it exists and that I got to watch it. I, I really like left the theater. I was like, thank God. <laughs> um and can I wear the scream mask, the mask from Scream when I do you from behind. <laughs> yes, Dude, you can. We've all been there. Um <laughs> I liked this movie. This might sound a little high, um, but I just want to give it credit where so many people have failed, especially without Wes Craven and stuff like that. So I'm going to give this a four out of five. All right. I liked it. I liked it. Solid rating from Juice. Bomb. Out of five, Scream, this is your franchise, my guy. Your franchise. <laughs> it's mine. I directed them all. How um, do you feel about par five? How do you feel about five cream? 2020 five, deuce. Five cream is a <laughs> solid sequel. They get a lot of shit right. They get some stuff wrong, I think. Um, some stuff we didn't really mention. I dig that they include Red Right Hand. It's, it's back. Oh, yeah, it's they back. did. That shit, yeah. yeah. That nice. Also, Dewey's theme, which Randy uh, did a little needle <laughs> drop at the beginning of the show. Dewey's theme mm-hmm. is back. Um, uh, I really appreciated the, like, massive nod to Wes Craven, one of the main characters in the movie's name, Wes. Uh, the big party sequence at the end is sort of like a memorial for Wes, and they have a huge banner that just says, like, for Wes on it, like, hanging throughout the whole end sequence. I love that, man. That's fucking great. Um, I like how the vast majority of the trivia questions in this movie are about the Stab series. It sort of adds a little extra um, layer of meta in there that the other sequels didn't really like like focus on at all in a way they probably should have. Um, the uh, the Randy homage was cool. Like it's 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 like extremely like God knows we fucking seen it and seen it and seen it but i liked i liked it still at the end of the day like his niece is on the couch uh you know watching a movie stab that was based on his exact murder in the exact room where he was murdered telling the actor on screen to turn around and then as she's doing that realizes she herself should probably turn around and does it ends up surviving i thought that was like cool but also like it's just the exact same shit that we've seen before um the Billy Loomis like force ghost is not my favorite thing, but I will give them props in that that's probably the most original and like new thing they did in this movie. It I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either because it was like a fresh thing that no other screen movies ever done before. So I, I give them props for that. Um, the, the brutality in the kills w- was like really fucking palpable. Like you feel every single kill in this movie. Um, they really drive that shit home. And I, I appreciate that out of a really any slasher movie. If you can like make the kills matter and, and make your audience feel that you're doing something right. Um, again, the motive by far my favorite port, uh, part of the movie uh, i fucking I, I love how that whole thing comes full circle uh movies make killers more creative the killers are in this movie trying to make the movies more creative it's fucking smart i love it um i i think the biggest problem i have with this movie though again is like as the characters themselves say in this movie this is the most derivative installment in the franchise and i think it's super ironic that our killers go so far to say that they are doing this because they want to inspire filmmakers to make an interesting movie. But at the end of the day, this movie in and of itself is just the same shit we've already seen before. And it's not inspired. It's just a fucking retread. Like they, if they had just switched something up in the last act, 
it really would have been a home run. And they, I feel like they highlight that so clearly and then just do the same shit. And it's like, man, you, you, you fucking, the layup is there, but you just don't slam dunk it. It's so close. Um, I still think it's a really solid movie. It's a, it's a solid slasher movie. It's a solid scream sequel. The reverence it holds for the original is annoying. And it just, like I said, it just kind of does the same things that it highlights these other, uh, uh, legacy sequels do and it makes the same mistakes which is it's it's a bummer but i don't know i'm gonna give this a 3.5 it's solid um randy how do you feel um yeah i mean you're making a lot of sense for my for my money i i uh, you actually like you're you're putting a button on the ending for me it was like that kind of turned the feelings because I, I was more i i came into this expecting this podcast this episode to be a polar opposite to last week's doom where <laughs> it was a shitty movie that i was lightly defending and i thought i was going to be the only person in the room not gushing wildly and you know that was going to be put on the offensive for this one I, and it wasn't you know I'm, I'm glad like you guys seem to i think have different but i think reasonable opinions about this and i i think that that in particular kind of swayed me um, to, in this movie's favor even more because I do I do really like this movie I don't think it holds a candle to one I mean I don't think it could I, I think that like sequels in general are doomed to fail in that way unless they're like hit some sort of mega jackpot gold that takes a big swing which is why I would have been okay with them going a lot bigger the way that they did with four but even bigger than that in some capacity that nobody could have seen coming they didn't do that they brought it back to basics and for being basics of scream i think it did a pretty damn good job and i think that you know all of my misgivings for the most part are pretty minor quibbles i really like i still feel like the term elevated horror could have easily died off but now this gives it new life that it does not need and i don't want it to have I don't know that I'll forgive this movie for that, <laughs> for breaking the lexicon, but um, you know, people disagree. That's fine. I, I just feel like that. And that's, that's very much like, that's a me thing. I know, I know that. Um, so I was looking back and I gave Halloween 2018 a four. And I was thinking to myself, that was about where I, I think that I'm going to land this. And I, I, I ended up because of that. I think that they, the conversation about how one sort of like started like, bringing in some levity and scream started removing levity and they're sort of like they're mainlining together a little bit and i don't want them to become homogenous god i don't want the movie that comments on movies to become hom exactly a one-to-one -one <laughs> with the movies that it's parodying that would be fucking stupid and that to rob's point i think that there is some danger of that with this because they don't break enough of the mold but they also show enough reverence without going overboard too much uh too often to where I feel like they're about on par with each other. So I'm going to give this a four, which I'm shocked to be the one giving it the highest rating. Honestly, <laughs> I gave it a four as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you, I don't know why I thought you gave it a 3.5, but yeah, I think it's a four. I think it's, you know, I liked Halloween 2018 as well. I think I like them about the same amount, but the, like, I like that this movie really recaptured a lot of what the original had while still having something to say, even though I think it was poorly communicated and I do think that it, you know, the original wasn't perfect either. So to me, it's a four. All right, Randy, we rated it higher than Bob. Yeah. I'm, I'm, surprised. I'm surprised. I'm surprised like, for okay. scream over there. I didn't yeah. predict who the killers were in this movie, but I did predict how we would all react. And I wrote it down. You wrote it in down, advance. Here it and Here boy, was I fucking wrong. What is this? I wrote thing? down. Uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't. Rob is a stan. It was my first comment. <laughs> was the I wrote. Yeah, Rob is a stan. Juice is pleased, but indifferent mostly. Randy is a bummer. That's what I wrote. <laughs> Pretty wrong. Pretty wrong. Yeah, I was very wrong, actually. Wow. I was actively attempting not to be a bummer. I guess I was shooting myself in the foot. <laughs> but nice. Rob is a stan. That's uh, I'm I'm shocked to be the lowest rating on this movie, but that still puts our aggregate at a three point eight, which is very favorable. And oh yeah, I will say yeah. like thank God we're starting twenty twenty two with this movie because this is a Me great a great start to the year. <laughs> Even though yeah. like I I was a little down on this. Like fuck, this is a great start to the year. I'm excited. Dude, here at yeah. And I really do think that that like if we hadn't had this past year that we had, yeah. maybe I wouldn't have been as favorable. But coming into this movie, a January movie after 2021 and then leaving the theater, I was like, 
<laughs> you had a lot riding on this one. <laughs> I did. You put it all on black, my friend. Yeah, I Don't did. fuck me, luckily, radio silence. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> luckily, they, they nailed He's it. He's got a death curse. Cool. cool. Well, let's go ahead and jump into our Rotten Tomato segment and see what the critics and users think about Scream. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Rotten Tomatoes segment in which I'm going to give these two gents the chance to guess within the best of their abilities what the aggregate scores are on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's start with the critic score, as we usually do. And there are 191 reviews culled here, so factor that in however you will i'll start with bob this week bob what do you think the critics feel about this movie aggregate wise the critics ah this is tough this is a tough one um i'm gonna go relatively positive but not like crazy Mm -hmm. uh give me an an 80 please 80 all right, eighty percent for Bob Soju. Where are you landing on this one? I yeah, I agree. Um, I think we're going to be men of the critics this week. We three three point eight is seventy six. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to be close. I mean, eighty is close, but um, I'll take the low end. I'll say seventy five since it's like close to seventy six. <laughs> Another ring-a-ding-ding here, gentlemen. 75% on the button for Soju. Whoa, Bob! Can I get a hell yeet? Hell skeet. Purely and simply evil. Dude, right on the money. Did yeah. And that's, I mean, when you start doing the math, I was like, holy shit, he's really going to get it. I, for <laughs> some this, reason, I just thought we were really going to be on point. With I thought you were going to go 76. Week. And I was like, oh, man. Uh, I mean, yeah, I would have been right there. Yeah. But yeah, I went, I rounded it off. 76 isn't a funny band name, so. <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right. No, well, congrats to Soju. Let's go over to the user score. The users, there are over a thousand verified ratings for the audience. Um, where do we think they're landing? Let's start with Juice this time. And I think it's going to be similar. I think it's okay. going to be pretty damn close. Um, I think the fans would generally like this a little more than the critics, but I don't think it's going to go nuts in the butts. Um, I might take Bob's 80. I'm going to swoop stolen in that 80. spot. Yeah, I think it's going to be a scope right. higher. Bob, you got swooped. Where are you going with this? I think this is going tongues in the butts. It's super. Oh. It's way up there. It's it's above 80, I Ooh. think. I think it's... Ooh. Okay. I'm, I'm, Ooh. Give me okay, an eight, well, give me a number. I'm on a $1. Give me an 81. That's Ooh, 81. Oh, the $1. Uh, well... It was a very, very, very solid guess. 84% is the correct no! number. You, you got one dollar, Bob. Or Bob, one dollar. Do, do, I don't know. Whatever. I was so, trying to do somebody a price is right thing. Know. It just fucked up. Bob, you won. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Can I get a who? Yeah. Uh, that's what you get, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the critics consensus here on Rotten Tomatoes. They, it reads as follows. The fifth scream finds the franchise working harder than ever to maintain its meta edge and succeeding surprisingly often. I don't think that's unfair to say. Sure. Yeah. And I know we like touched on it, but I mean, for a fifth in a franchise, yeah. I mean, come on. How often I mean, are yeah. the fifth? I mean, sometimes, but you know, not really. Yeah. They, they did a <laughs> solid spent- ass job. They did. Yeah, well done. I think overall, let's read a negative review and see if it has any funny to it. This new Scream is so determined to be a Scream movie that it forgets the primary unstated rule established by the original Scream. You can sell anything to us so long as you make it scary. So this guy didn't think it was scary, I guess, is what that's supposed to communicate. (laughs) Fuck that, dude. You want to try again, guy? Get an editor. Yeah, I don't (laughs) want to agree with that. Yeah, I think it. I mean, it's as scary as any others for me. As scary yeah, than most of them. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not one that gets scared by movies very easily, and or at all really anymore. <laughs> Just disturbed is kind of what happens if it's really bad. Yeah. None of them do that to me. So, what do you? What is this? We're, oh, we're just oh. um can I also say one funny thing that we completely get in touch on that I really want to call out is the fucking multiple 
behind the door <laughs> misleads yeah. for yeah. the character of Wes. That's pretty good. Yeah. That shit made me laugh. That was good levity. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I forgot about that. I just want to call it out. That was good. Okay. That's like the that. end of our segment. Uh, Bob, where All are you right. taking us? We're going into some trivia. Let's do it. It's time for trivia. All right. We have got another segment of trivia here. Since Bob collected this all again, I will not even try to turn this into a fun game. But we can guarantee that this is the most interesting trivia of this bunch. Um, <laughs> because it was vetted for once. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> this, this actually is fun. I like this bit of trivia. David Arquette, who is a certified Bob Ross painting instructor. Certified. Oh, certified. They have a school for that. Yeah, taught several of the cast members how to paint like the legendary artist during filming breaks. That's wonderful. I don't know why <laughs> that struck me so nice, but it did. David um, Arquette strikes me as like one of the one of the like celebrities that I would most like to hang out with. I think he would be just yeah, a fun dude to be around. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um and he works his ass off. I was looking at his filmography. They've been in a fuck ton of movies over the past like decade that I didn't really know about. He's, you know, just working out there working. Um, horror bloggers. Who are these fools? James A. Janice and Chelsea Rebecca from the YouTube channel Dead Meat cameo as film critics. Guys, we've been doing this eight years. Why didn't they ask us to be in screen five, <laughs> five We're cream? Not- um, mm-hmm. Can you imagine if the straight chilling crew is in oh five cream? This what would if, get a five star if that if, you're in if we all got murdered. That would be <laughs> fucking great, dude. I dude, let's petition for us to be in six cream. Um, when Richie is oh, okay, when Richie is watching a YouTube video about stab eight, the thumbnail beside it features a photograph of Hayden um, Panich uh, Panitaire. Panitaire. Thank you. I'm the names fuck my face. Um, Panitaire as her screen for character fuck Kirby Reed, referring to her as a Woodsboro survivor. Uh, Panitaire, re- uh, I already forgot it, receives a special thanks credit for the photo. <laughs> oh my lord. You nice. got it. Oh, she, she was listed as a survivor? Yeah. Yeah. She survived. It was actually built that. into her contract for Scream 4 that she would not die. So she That's pretty awesome. She doesn't, yeah. Wow. Huh. I didn't know that. There you go. Um, Trivia. <laughs> yeah. To avoid any potential plot details from being leaked to the public, several different versions of existing of existing scenes in the film were shot along with multiple versions of the actual script being written. As oh, plot yeah. details being leaked by the cast and crew members has famously been a problem with the franchise. The most notable example being Scream Deuce, which had to be almost entirely rewritten with an extra leak when an extra leaked the script to the public. God damn. Um, Dude, honestly, that like this this movie might be uh, a movie that I need to get physical on because the bonus features, the alternate endings, I got to see that shit. Mm, I got to get yeah, that true. when it comes out. That would be nice. True. Yeah. Uh, Nev Campbell was initially hesitant to return to the franchise, especially in a new screen film that didn't feature Wes Craven as director. That's understandable. Uh, what yeah. changed her mind was a letter sent to her uh, by the the directors of Squad, um, Matt. Be- oh God, Bennett Benedelli Olfen. Oh, Ra- Radio oh. Silence wrote her a letter. <laughs> Yeah, these guys. You are Tim Heidecker trying to make games right now. It's fucking killing me. I think I got this one. And Tyler Gillette. There we go. Nailed where it. they wrote about how much Wes Craven and his films meant to them as filmmakers. Maybe if we wrote some letters every now and then, we'd be featured in some you know, famous horror movies, boys. God damn. You need to write more letters. Letter writing campaign time. Um, I wanted to point out also that, that the Radio Silence guys, these are the guys that did the best short and the original VHS as well. True. Yeah. Which I just looked up and that's which one? Awesome. I'm glad. Which one of them? Um, the haunted house. Is the last one. Oh, the house one. that's these yeah. guys. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good, Good for, for them. Man. I'm glad that yeah, that, yeah I like, got to do this. This, this is exactly what I wanted for them after seeing that. Bet and Ellie. I'm I'm oof. Bet, <laughs> okay, Bet open, the trivia. I think. Yeah. Well, okay, open. Yeah. Open. Thank you. Um, in Scream 1996, Dewey tells Sydney, I see you as a young Meg Ryan myself. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Jack Quaid, son of no. Okay, I I, I thought this was going somewhere else. It's not Jack Quaid, okay. son of Meg Ryan, and Dennis Quaid stars in the movie. I thought. Oh, I, is he? I, mm-hmm. One thing I did like where where they were like Bob had said. I think Bob said where they're talking about the trivia of the stab movies. And I was like, Oh, did they say that Meg Ryan played this role? I thought that's where they were going with it, but I liked how they assigned roles to the stab characters. Right. Yeah. In this. Like that was pretty funny. You see the, in, the entire, like, like she pulls up the IMDB for stab. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. 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 That's where I it. thought they were going with this, but that's I, honestly the, the, like the Jack Quaid's character or whatever. It's Jack Quaid, right? Yeah, yeah, Jack Quaid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought. I mean, I I thought he did a pretty damn good job too. So same. Yeah, I like. Which him. one was yeah. he? Richie. He was the killer. Richie. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that he. Good. I mean, he certainly was the standout killer, at least. But mm-hmm. even throughout the movie, he got a lot of like good goof lines. He did. If anybody yeah. was, if anybody was the stew of this movie, I guess he has the their most rightful claim to that. Yeah. Because he uh, made some silly, funny jokes. I don't think did. he really got Lillard on it though. We <laughs> did mention how that one girl like started. She got a little slobbery. I think in tribute to Lillard. Yeah. The the did she, I didn't notice Amber. Aubrey, yeah. a Amber. Little, yeah. A little drool action. She did, yeah. I appreciated that. Also, we didn't really talk about her face like catching fire and then her coming back. That was pretty fun too. It was great. Um, What's to say? Yeah. The, okay. The eighth movie is referred to as the one done by the Knives Out guy and changed up the typical stab formula to include yeah. many new and unwelcome changes. A various o- or a very obvious nod to to Johnson's uh, controversial Jones. Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Yeah. Uh, Mindy name drops various franchises that have been requels in the past, such as Jurassic Park. Terminator. Uh, I've never seen any of those Terminator movies. I assume they're dog shit. Um, Halloween, Ghostbusters, and Star Wars. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. T- <laughs> I fucking. I don't know, man. That that whole thing with um, where she's like li- rattling off names or whatever. Mm. I think they do okay an okay job with that. But like, I don't know. Like, what's the? Uh, I lost the thread. I went. I was saying, fuck. Me. <laughs> Sweet. I had I had a thought and then it just <laughs> fucking left my brain completely. Uh, this is this is this is great audio. I'm gonna let Randy guess. Randy, what do you think the body count in this film is? Oh god. Um Bob, do you remember this? I think so, yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure. I'll let Randy guess first. I think and you can take a stab at it. Stab. Ooh, I think it is five. Mm, pretty close. Body count eight. Really? Uh, Vince Schneider, Judy Hicks, oh, I forgot Wes about Hicks, the cop. unnamed deputy, Dewey Riley, uh, Liv McKenzie, Richie Kirsch, and Amber oh, Freeman. F- yeah, I forgot about purple hair also. Yeah, she was really Easy forgettable as a character. Yeah, yeah. She was yeah almost I mean, non-existent. Yeah. I kind of get it because, like, this movie has to do all the work of the first movie in terms of setting up characters in the friend group, etc., while also paying beautiful homage yeah. to our favorites. Like, it's a True. tough, it's a tough job. Mm. True. The new ensemble cast of characters' connections to legacy characters are as follows: uh, Sam Carpenter is the illegitimate daughter of Billy Loomis. What, how could they not bring back Lillard? Come on, they needed to do something. Wes is the son of 2011 Ghostface survivor Judy Hicks. Um, Chad and Mindy are the nephew and niece of the late Randy Meeks. Vince Randy. Vince Schneider is the nephew of Stu, and Amber Freeman lives in his old house. Um, the old the only Woodsboro high school teenage character in the film not to have a connection to the on-screen or to the on-screen legacy character is Liv McKenzie. Um, though her surname seems to be a reference to Casey ba- Becker's unseen neighbors in the original film. Okay. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, when the, her parents get home, they're like, run down to the McKenzie's. The McKenzie's. Oh, which my is, God. Which is a reference to which Halloween. Is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. By okay. the way, and like... Uh, Sam's Sam being her name and all that shit like yeah instead of Sid well well no because she's Loomis's daughter oh, Sam, oh, Sam I see Sam is her name and I Sam see. Carpenter is her name uh, yeah Carpenter yeah Sam I did Carpenter pick up on the cast 
Yeah. But I did like, yeah. you know, because it's supposed to be, you know, oh, replacing except for did it better because it was her cousin or niece or whatever. But this, you know, they call her Sam. Her name's Samantha. And then when Sid comes in, her name is Sydney. They call her Sid. I just mm-hmm. thought that was like a clever little thing. I didn't they think did. of that. But yeah, I remembered what I was going to say earlier. Now, do you want to hear it? <laughs> sure. Uh, sure. Last Jedi is not that bad, people. Calm down. <laughs> That's a movie that I think Whoa. benefits from give, taking a, a, a big swing, whereas The Force Awakens just was fucking the same goddamn thing. All those movies well, are like fine both, at best. The really. less part no, yeah, I'm not saying it's yeah. a great movie. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying that I was glad that they took a swing yeah. on something. That's, that's basically what I was kind of hoping this movie would have done. But right. Did, but that's uh, to yeah. tie it back in. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. That's what this movie did, chose not to do. Yeah. And it came dangerously close to Force Awakening it a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. At least closer I, than the alternative. <laughs> It, it's yeah, it's very similar to that, but I would I'd rather watch this than Force Awakens. Really, any oh any yeah, day. definitely, it's a better but, movie yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I just I appreciate that Ryan Johnson didn't just yeah. like yeah yeah didn't just, just copy take pace. the beats and replace them. Yeah, yeah like yeah. I feel I you. Know. I feel you on that. I also like the 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 like. He dared me- to me- character develop and shit. The metal uh, ghost face mask was like a ki- kind of like a random nod to the wh- what is the character Captain F- Phasma or whatever Phasma? Yeah, yeah, Phasma yeah. From the Star Wars, Reaper yeah, where trilogy. it's platinum or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What is, is that from Rogue One or is that from one of the? No, movies? it's from a Force Awakens, yeah. and then okay. she, and then the Last Jedi Captain as well. Phasma, you know, I haven't seen yeah. what's the what's the last one? What is the most? It's uh, Return, the, Reven- no. the Revenge of the Sith. Skywalker Revenge of the Sith no. fucks again. Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> yes. Rise of yeah. See, like, and that's that's the one that to <laughs> me is like more egregious. Know. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I've I've I, as I've under I've come to understand that that movie pulls from the same bag of tricks that they always do. So all Dude, the more that movie, God, that that trilogy is boo boo. It is <laughs> it's tough. It's a tough it's a tough watch. job, and <laughs> they did not rise to the challenge. No. Man, I, I forgot. I, for money, out of the two I've seen, I like this. I like Ryan I, Johnson's take. I know the last Jedi like sticks out as like the. I forgot how bad the Rise of Skywalker or whatever was until we just started talking about it. I still I kind of blanked that, that out from my. Mind. <laughs> oh, oh, that oh my god! It's like oh no, we went too far in the wrong direction. We gotta do exactly the same thing, or we will die yeah. on the fucking altar. We gotta. Whip it back. God, that movie blows. <laughs> Whip it. Yeah, they just keep ping ponging between the most obvious thing possible and the craziest idea possible. You know what was dope though? Rogue One. You know what was dope? I like Rogue One. <laughs> when we were talking about Scream. No. <laughs> we've dope. moved on to Star Wars Look, now. But Scream, this is now. Oh, the Scream Star 2022, Wars. the movie about prequels and sequels. Yeah, yeah, I guess that is sort of a jumping off point, ain't it? Let's uh let's jump into our cooter of the week. Juice, what's a cooter and why do we hunt them? Cooter is a character type and a straight shawn exclusive. Cooter must could could you imagine if we were in Scream 5 talking about cooters? Jesus Christ. We could, that could have been us. That could have Should been have us. been <laughs> us. That's sh- yeah. Maybe, in, <laughs> Randy, maybe in the inevitably inferior Scream 6. Randy, you yeah. should have been on the couch screaming at Randy to turn around. It was <laughs> your Randy, role. It belonged to you. Backwards, though. Well, <laughs> I should have been doing it completely backwards. Mm-hmm. Like the backwards, <laughs> the backwards man. man. The backwards man. The backwards man. The backwards man. I can walk backwards fast as you can. I can walk backwards fast as you can. Oh, so long. All right. Cooter must hit three of these five <laughs> points to be considered a cooter. We want a cooter with most points. The five points are sexual deviance, manipulation, smug arrogance, overall look and attire, and overall. Boys, what's five Ooh. cream got to offer as far as cooters? You know, I started when he when we first started the segment and the bump was playing. I was like, I don't know. Is in Scream Five? Is there any? And then a very very obvious candidate jumped out at me. Who? Bob? Do you know who I'm talking about? Richie, I think. Richie. Richie, the boyfriend. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the boyfriend. Yeah, that's not what I was going to say. You're talking about Billy Loomis. 
No, although great choice. I mean, he I didn't even think about cooter. that. He's the cooter he from one, and he's he in is this an movie. ultimate. He's a, yeah, he is. But he Ghost in this Lewis. movie plays more of an Obi Wan role. Um, <laughs> no, I was gonna Obi-Wan. point out the fucking guy who's stalking uh, Sam's sister or whoever. Uh, the oh, guy who the guy who, who had who gets killed up, by the car hook up with Liv. Yeah. Oh yeah. sure. The yeah. guy with the red right hand. Yeah. You know red that. Right I mean, hand. let's let's cover why. Um, uh, smug arrogance, certainly true. You are yeah. stalking somebody yeah. brazenly in front of a very large man that will a- absolutely beat the fuck out of you. <laughs> um, uh, sexual deviancy. I mean, these are high schoolers, so easy, easy one on that. That guy, uh, he was like older than high school, though, wasn't was he? He was outside. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah, that, that's why if, was, if we were going to give sexual deviance for anything, it's like he was like the. 20 something year old showing up in high school to yeah. you know like he was McConaughey in it a little yeah. bit uh, yeah so I could right, I, yeah right. because of the implication it's I would not uh, all right <laughs> it's not it's not, <laughs> well, it's not okay so that's two that's two out of five I think um, we yeah I think that's fair I enough I think manipulation um, I mean I don't he doesn't outwardly lie to anybody but he is hardcore aggressing on people like showing up staring making yeah he's like face, physically manipulative because he's threatening people with like a knife and shit yeah I mean I don't know like I think that might be a harder sell but I think that it works for me because this is this is somebody who's like gaslighting the fuck out of these people too and being like come on she's still going with me or she says something to the effect of like uh, I was talking to the lady. She's coming with me now, or some shit like that. It's like, well, no. <laughs> that, that point is light. We might still give it to him. I will definitely say the motherfucker's pathetic. Like, if he is actually like mid twenties, yeah. like cruising high schools, mm-hmm. like like sup girl, let's let's fuck on your summer break. Like that is yep. pathetic, man. <laughs> That's the easy sexual deviance patheticness one two punch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think he lands as a cooter. But to Joe Juice's point, well, let's talk about old Skeet. I mean, oh, Skeet, Skeet is Skeet, the Skeet, ultimate. Do you have a case for it? I mean, Skeet is the ultimate cooter in Screen One. It's documented. Okay, documented. so he's in the in book the a cooter. He was booked. He's and, out on parole. And this and the character appears in this movie. Is he though? That's not enough. That's not enough. He like he appears in the character guard. I don't know if it is either because also like you could argue that this is not the character. This well, is yeah. This is fantasy of the Sam yeah. imagines him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's because talk, he's a dead man. Let's talk about let's, <laughs> let's talk person. about Richie. I think I think Richie is is definitely All right. up there. So. Definitely, Richie so, Appeal, <laughs> dude. Richie Appeal's one hundred percent motherfucker. <laughs> like, there is no de- debate about that. Uh, Sopranos discussion, but Richie in this movie, this motherfucker's got sexual deviance for sure. In the last scene, he's talking mm-hmm. about how like it was how easy it was to manipulate Sam yep. and Sleep also her. fuck Sleep her. her. Like, yeah. he's, he's, yeah. it was really easy to fuck you. Like, this dude's a piece of shit. So, sexual <laughs> deviance manipulation he's manipulating her he's well, yeah he's the manipulating whole game is literally everybody in, in, yeah except yeah. for amber who knows the real deal but he, everybody else he's manipulating um smug arrogance, arrogance. yeah I, I would definitely throw in smug arrogance like all the like cutesy jokes that he does say throughout the movie is like a complete facade that's not actually who he is oh yeah whatsoever yeah. so like when, when he does reveal himself in the end he's like very very like proud as he like slams a knife into sam and he's like i'm glad you're well, yeah because I, I would even wanted to kill yeah. you you know like, the whole like you are so easy to fuck thing that gives me some smug arrogance true like that too. come on because of the implication yeah. he's very dennis reynolds in my mind so i totally agree <laughs> yeah. i want to point out though that probably towering above the other points for me in his case is patheticness. Yeah. This dude is fucking pathetic for so many reasons, but not the least of which is the diatribe bullshit about fandoms (laughs) at the end. It's like your reason for murdering engineering a murder spree is because of fucking (laughs) because you fucking don't like being called a toxic fan. Like, (laughs) Do you understand the irony in that? You fuck? Like, I mean, who even goes on Reddit anymore? Dude, I don't know. Like, like, I don't. Like, I don't. like, I like who? Really like, if any, just, like, people who get <laughs> radicalized by fucking no, message boards can suck my asshole. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Damn. I did. Fucking I, pathetic. 
I Join know. our Slack now so we can make yeah. So we can <laughs> you today we can make you do what we want i th- i did th- i thought it was like funny. put us in scream six they they like name <laughs> drop the dreaded sub channel and i was like man i've been on there yeah. very very briefly <laughs> like fuck that shit <laughs> it's a very yeah yeah and that's well, like, no i mean some, like, on, that's good it's it's fine. There's I, lots of fans on there who listen to us. I, I'm sure. Rob, I'm pander, sure people, pander quick. I'm sure people do get something out of it, and if you do, I'm, They're I'm great. Happy. I am happy for you, and I hope I hope you enjoy that. I and now for this, we week's expect sponsors, a fully tearful uh, apology. Join the Dreadit, the subreddit, to learn more about. I've learned stuff. a whole lot this week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know. I didn't wh- how to Reddit. To be fucking honest, it's it's <laughs> it's old man Bob. You know, it's not, it's like everybody's got their outlet. We got our Slack, and that's yeah. that's that's enough yeah. for me. I don't have time for much much else. So yeah, who has? The and time? it's a fortunately very little toxicity on that particular. Yeah, because we'll bounce. So come we'll, join us. We will bounce a motherfucker. It's we're the first about, people. We? We're stupid assholes, and pretty yeah. much everybody there is is self effacing in that way as well. I don't yeah. think we've ever had to kick anybody out. We haven't. Now everybody, Not everybody's yet. so so like <laughs> kind and caring, and, and there's fucking, a couple people great. on the if line. That bean Mang wants <laughs> to keep using gifts. I don't know. <laughs> He keeps oh, using those wow. gifs, that son of a bitch. Those gifs <laughs> that take forever to load, and they blow up my fucking like AT and T bill. Like I can't load all. I think it's a GIFs. picture, it's, but it's moving. I think it's time for us to start a murder spree about this. What do you guys think? <laughs> Coming for you, the B. I am man. killing you because gifs annoy me. <laughs> I give AT and T sixty dollars a month. I I can't watch Don't all have your time bullshit. For your, for your Michael Scott gif, I've seen a million times. <laughs> Michael Scott. <laughs> Be original with your gifs. Anyway, there's a reason to murder. Good. Call me. me. I am going okay. to drop my deuce on everybody. <laughs> I think. The cooter of the week is Richie. I'm pretty sure. Does anybody disagree? I think we have a lot more evidence for him, direct yeah. evidence, than we do for even the the stalker kid. So, I agree. Yeah. I, think, I think we have booked Richie. Uh, let's let's skip what we've been watching this week. We got one more segment. We're jumping into our hot, um, hot hotline screams. Let's do it. Hotline screams. If you are listening and would like to call and leave a voicemail to be featured on next week's show, hit us up at 904-638-3231. We got one voicemail this week. It's from our favorite girl boss. Let's hear what she has to say. Hi, this is for Randy and Randy only. Uh, so the rest of y'all can't read these books because I said so. Um, so Randy, here are some books. Uh, the Troop by Nick Cutter got me back into reading. Uh, big content warning for animal abuse and body horror. No spoiler, but don't eat spaghetti while you read this. Um, do with that info as you will. Also by Nick Cutter, Little Heaven. It's basically like three bounty hunters go to investigate this cult, and there's freaky shit in the woods surrounding the cult, and shenanigans ensue when people try to leave. Uh, for Stephen King, my favorite is Night Shift, which is a collection of short stories. It's most famous for Children of the Corn and The Graveyard Shift. I've also read The Stand by Him, which is his longest book next to It, and it's good, but I remember seeing the 50% completed mark, and I was like, nice! And then next to it, it said 700 pages left, and I just threw my Kindle. Um, fucked up book. Tender is the Flesh. It's basically animal meat becomes toxic, and no one wants to go vegan, so uh, society starts breeding humans for food. It's fucking dehumanizing. Like, it's gross. Content warning for everything, but... Oh, Jesus Christ, is it dehumanizing. And right now I'm reading this book called The Ruins by Scott Smith. It's a sleeper because I never hear people talk about this book, but it's 40 different ways of fucked up. Um, it's fucking gross and there's no chapters. So it's like just this never ending train of like, um, when's this ending? I'd like to get off, please. <laughs> Um, I personally sometimes like horror books in the sense of like what's gonna scare me. I sometimes like books more because like in a movie, I'm seeing what the fuck is up. But on like the fucking in a book, like I can imagine whatever the fuck I want. Um yeah, so um yeah. 
Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was great. Um, I'm going to put those books down on my list here and I've got, it's, it's stacking up quite a number. And at this rate, I mean, it's going to be a while, but I'm putting them on the list anyway. I'm interested to see what I, I, I totally think it's true that like, you know, being able to imagine your own version of what's happening is a much easier path to actually getting effective terror. So like, I think that that's totally true. I, but like it, it, sometimes my imagination's fucked up when I first, when I was a kid and I first read like Harry Potter, uh, fucking the character of Hagrid, for some reason, my brain just implanted the image of, uh, Goku's dad. They're not the real one, but the one with the horns on his head, the really big guy. I don't remember his name, but it's a fucking Dragon Ball Z reference that I don't even know anymore. And still to this day, that is what I envision when I think of Hagrid Damn, first, that's even wild. more than the movies and shit. Yeah, it's fucking ah, weird. Like, and so weird. I like my brain will implant weird, disparate things. Like I'm reading um, my best friend's exorcism now, and the lead character keeps alternating between um, Ferruja Balk and the craft and, um, <laughs> And um, fucking uh, what's her name from uh, Back to the Future two and three? I'm completely blanking on her name. But the girl, <laughs> I don't know Jennifer. I can't remember her name. I'm I'm so sorry. I can't remember your name. But yeah, so like my brain's fucked up in that way. But when it comes to the actual horror stuff, I'm total in total agreement because you get to imagine it as horrifying as described, not as horrifying as presented. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, what what we were talking about last week for uh, our prompt was just like what what people's like New Year's resolutions were, and we were talking about like reading more. And Andy asked specific, specifically for like uh, book recommendation stuff because your New Year's resolution was to read more. Mm-hmm. So yeah, thanks thanks for calling in. Thanks for sharing some some fucked up stuff for Andy to to read. Um, you, know, about, you guys can't read it. How about I'm especially not. after after way this like pandemic shit has been going. How plausible does that vegan story sound now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not eating broccoli. I'm eating your liver. Dude, people would justify it. Yeah. This is not the first sci-fi about eating people. And I feel like it's <laughs> always just around the corner. It's always <laughs> so We're like a couple of couple so, of crises so away from that. At all I times. feel like we would be, I think it's been mentioned in like a couple of moves before that we would be like very similar to pork meat. So I feel like that could oh, yeah, I've heard be that as like well. pushed out of people's oh, minds. I've only heard that. I've never confirmed. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I promise. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, think- damn, these people are confused. Thanks for thanks for calling in, girl boss. Always good to hear from you. Definitely. Well, is that is that what you're dubbing, girl? Or well, she dubbed us girl bosses, and I'm just sort of like you know, return, oh, that's right. returning okay. the favor. Right. You know, we're sort of a we're all fellow girl, girl boss. Yeah, okay, yeah. yes, that's right. Um, I think uh, I think we got uh, it's an uh, honorary title. <laughs> it's an honor. I think we do have a prompt <laughs> for next week. Something we were talking about uh, before we recorded the show. Um, it was like how we would want to rank all the Scream movies in the franchise. Uh, so mm-hmm. we, we want to pose that question to you guys listening. Call in, let us know. How would you rank the five Scream movies? You know, worst or to best or best to worst, however you want to do it. Let us know how, how you'd rank them. We're curious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and zero. maybe you'll hear our opinions maybe, on the matter. Maybe, maybe. If maybe. you're good. Maybe. More to come on that. Hit us up at 904-638-3231. Rank the, rank the five cream movies. We want to know. <laughs> cream number one is my favorite. Ooh, I'll bet it is, but the, the first cream is always likes the best thing. cream. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for us. <laughs> Just, uh, why is the behind the scenes on that? Because literally nobody else is laughing. <laughs> Bobby's that's- just getting himself. I love there's an extra little push there from yourself. Rob and my friendship is predicated on the fact that I can make the worst jizz jokes possible that will make me <laughs> i will just laugh that's Bob oh yeah really was just it's a guarantee train there it's, i love riding my own train <laughs> shit and uh, much uh, on some grinding <laughs> wow uh that's gonna do it for us this week here at straight chilling uh please rate review and subscribe to us 
on iTunes and also on Spotify. It's a great way to support the show. It only takes a moment of your time. We really do appreciate it. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at str 8 escort chilling on Instagram at straight chilling podcast. And you can send us an email through our website, straight chilling podcast.com. We're going to be back next week with a brand new show. Just like always, we are talking about, uh, another Patreon pick. Uh, this was chosen by Simon H and the movie is 2008 Eden Lake. Slam your eyeballs into Eden Lake. Get ready for next week's show. Until next week, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling. 